Hi, I'm Brian Watrous of VMware Education. In this video, we're going to study how to supply input parameters to an orchestrator workflow. This video is one in a series of videos in which we're discussing vCenter Orchestrator. In the previous video, we discussed how to create a simple workflow. In this video, we're going to learn how to make a more complex workflow in which we supply input parameters to that workflow. But let's begin with asking, what are input parameters? Well, input parameters allow the user who's invoking your workflow to pass in information. Now, input parameters are one of several types of variables in Orchestrator. We're going to learn about other types of variables, such as output parameters and attributes later on in this series of videos. But for right now, we're just going to concentrate on input parameters. Each input parameter has a name. So a parameter, input parameter name might be something such as first name, if you're asking for the user's first name, or max snapshot size in megabytes, if you're creating a workflow that asks the user to um, find snapshots of a certain size, enable DRS, or VM to clone. We can create a variety of input parameters for our workflows, but the names that we choose need to be comprised of letters and or numbers, the letters can be upper or lower case. One character that you can't have in your variable names is spaces, which is why you can see we're using what's known as camel case in these example variable names. So first name, you'll notice I've capitalized the letter in. Uh, this camel case notation where every word begins with a capital letter, with the exception of the first word, is used in place of spaces to make it easier to read the input parameter names. We use that same convention with other variable types, such as output parameters and attributes. That is a naming convention. Camel case is what we use. Uh, if you can use other schemes, but whichever scheme you use, be consistent. Input parameters each have a type. There are simple data types, such as strings, numbers, and booleans. The first three variable names that I mentioned there are presumably those three types. First name would be a string. Max snapshot size in megabytes would be a number, and enable DRS would be a Boolean with a true-false value. On the other hand, Orchestrator also has more complex data types, such as date objects, and virtual machine objects, and data store objects. The fourth variable name that I listed above, VM to clone, would be presumably a virtual machine object. So every input parameter has a name, every input parameter has a type, and every input parameter has a value. But in the case of input parameters, it's the user that's going to set the value. Now, one little caveat before we go on. I'm going to keep talking about that user as if that user was always a human being. But with Orchestrator, workflows aren't necessarily always called by human beings. Sometimes they're called by other workflows. Sometimes they're called from third-party programs. But to simplify our discussion here, we're just going to assume that the user that's invoking your workflow is a human being. In this demonstration, I'll show you how to supply input to a workflow using input parameters. Now, we could do this demonstration by creating a new workflow entirely, but we already have a workflow that does essentially what we want. Now, we already created this workflow called Hello World in a previous demonstration. What I'm going to do is right-click that workflow and duplicate it. We'll make changes to the duplicate instead of starting over from scratch. I'm going to slightly change its name. Instead of calling it copy of Hello World, I'm going to call it Hello World Personalized. And if we take a look at this schema associated with this workflow, we'll see that it, again, already does essentially what we want to do. We just want to add a little twist to it. But before we can make changes to the workflow, we have to edit it. You'll recall from the previous videos that you can edit a workflow either by clicking on the pencil icon or by right-clicking the workflow and choosing Edit. Or you can left-click the workflow and type Control-E. But one way or another, we need to edit the workflow. And in this workflow, if we take a look at the existing schema, remember this was copied over from the workflow that we duplicated. If we look at the existing workflow, it has a schema element labeled Say Hello. And if we look more closely at that schema element by editing it, we can see that that schema element says, hello world. But what we want to do is modify this workflow so that it's more personalized. So that instead of saying, 
hello world, it'll say something such as hello Brian or hello Eric or hello in, in specifying whatever name we input when we run the workflow. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the, the schema editor. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to the inputs tab to create an input parameter. Now on the inputs tab, if I click on the add parameter button, a line is entered down below. The first thing I'm going to do is change that name. The default name argin0 is not particularly descriptive. We want a more descriptive name, so I clicked on argin0, or whatever the name of that variable happens to be. Then I'll type a better name, such as, well, let's see, we're going to ask the user for his name, so we could call this input parameter something such as user name. By default, input parameters are strings, and string is appropriate for what we're asking for in the username, but if we needed to change the type of the variable, we'd simply click on the word string, and from the pop-up list, we would choose the type of variable that we want, for instance, a Boolean or a number. But again, string is the correct type for what we're trying to do here, so we'll simply accept the default. And then over on the right side here, you have a field where you describe the variable. As I've said in earlier uh, sessions of these, this video series, it is important that you always type a description. I'll show you uh, one of the reasons why right now. Uh, notice precisely what I'm typing here. I'm typing your name. See if you can commit that to memory because that string is going to show up again shortly here. So I've now created an input parameter called username. And in theory, what I can do in the schema element is instead of having the message say hello world, we could have the message say hello username. So I'm going to go ahead and make that change. And for reasons that I'll explain in a moment, uh, notice that my variable name currently is showing up in black text. Uh, the fact that it's black text actually tells me there's a problem, which we're just about to fix in a moment here. But conceptually, this is what we're trying to do. We want, instead of a message that says, hello world, we want a message that says, hello, followed by whatever username the user specifies when they run the workflow. Now, it's not enough to simply create the input parameter. If I want this schema element to see that input parameter, I have to bind the input parameter to the schema element. To do so, I enter the schema editor, which I've already done by clicking the pencil icon. I go to the in tab, and then by clicking on the add binding button, I can bind the variable name, the input parameter that we created earlier on the inputs tab, to this schema element called say hello. To do so, I'll simply select the input parameter and click select. Now notice over in the scripting section before, the text is no longer in black for the username variable, but rather it's color-coded. When it's color-coded in this pinkish sort of color, uh, that's indicating that this thing called username is a variable of some sort and that it has been correctly, that we have correctly set up the binding so that the schema element can see it. Now, this code is actually fine just as it is, but to show you a little trick here, I'm going to get rid of one of those instances of the variable name, username. Instead of typing username, which uh, you may notice as you go through these videos, sometimes my typing's not so good. Instead of running the risk of mistyping that or taking the time it takes to type all those letters, when you've properly set up the binding for a variable, whether it's an inward binding or an outward binding, you'll see all of your bound variables listed here in the schema editor. And instead of typing the name and potentially mistyping it, I can simply click on the variable name and the variable is automatically inserted wherever my cursor was. So I've now gone to the inputs tab to create the input parameter. I set up a binding to that parameter in the in tab, and then I use the variable in my code.
If I click Close, before I save and close the workflow itself, I should validate the workflow. And again, we notice that there are no problems. So we'll click Close. Then we'll click Save and Close to save the workflow. And now we're ready to run the workflow, which I'll do by right-clicking the workflow and choosing Start Workflow. Now you'll recall, we added one input parameter to this workflow. The input parameter's variable name is username, and the description was, as you'll recall, your name. Whatever name, excuse me, whatever description you type on that inputs tab for a variable, such as an input parameter, that's what's going to be displayed here on this particular screen when you run the workflow. So it's important that you type a, a sensible, uh, descriptive description for your input parameters. Now I'm going to type a name here. I'm not feeling terribly creative, so I'll just type my own. I'm going to type the name Brian. I'll click Submit. And if we watch the workflow schema, we can see it ran very, very quickly. If we go to the Workflow Execution Tokens Logs tab, we can see now instead of saying Hello World, this workflow says Hello Brian. If we run the workflow again and type someone else's name, such as Eric, when we run the workflow, it now says Hello Eric. So what we've illustrated in this particular demonstration is how to add input parameters to a workflow. And admittedly, I did gloss over some key details, in particular, the details about variable binding. So in order to understand variable binding, you'll want to view the next video in this series in which we're going to be talking about variable binding. I've personally taught uh, hundreds of students how to program in Orchestrator, and I can tell you from personal experience that variable binding is one of the largest stumbling blocks for beginning Orchestrator programmers, so you'll definitely want to watch the next video in this series. For in-depth, hands-on Orchestrator training, enroll in the VMware vCenter Orchestrator Develop Workflows class, and connect with other Orchestrator developers online at communities.vmware.com. Thank you.